Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is line trace for objects? I have some examples here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to be looking at the line trace for objects example. Let me run it. And what we're seeing is my sphere is my originator for my line trace. It is going through this item here. And then when it hits the wall, it is getting stopped and getting a hit result. And you'll notice it's the second one here and it successfully hit. So what we are using is the line trace by objects type. Let's go ahead and pull up the example. Go ahead and hit edit, line trace for objects. And we have the line trace for objects node. You can access it by typing in line trace, line object, any of those types, and you'll find line trace for objects. We'll cover the default settings now. Basically, from the starting point, this is going to fire towards the ending point, and then anything of the object type that it hits, it's going to return back as the hit value, and then it also if it successfully hit. So our starting value is going to be our starting point in our scene, and the ending value is going to be the ending value of where we want to go to. In our case, when we run our example, basically I'm starting at the middle of our sphere, and I'm just firing forward a distance and stopping. And when I refer to the hit point, you can see this is the hit point here where we have our little red square behind our box. Now the object types are a object type enumerator that refers to the collision types for Unreal Engine. The easiest way I've found to fill things out in here is just to right click and promote to variable or you can drag off and promote to variable and simply going to make you a new array that you can then work with. Remember to compile afterwards and you'll be able to access the values. Now the nice thing about the object types is you can have more than one thing you want to react to. So technically you could basically put all of your object types in here like static and dynamic and then even the pawn and have it react to only these, and then of course ignore anything that's not. So in this case, I went ahead and we actually probably, let's delete the extras. Let's rename this variable, object types array. That way we know what it is, and we'll go ahead and run it with our new example. What I've done is changed our object types array to hold the static, dynamic, and pawn enumerators. Now when I run this, You'll notice it now collides with my player because it's a type pawn. It now collides with this little box right here because this is dynamic. And if we were doing a multi-trace or allowing it, it would also collide with the object behind it, the wall, because that's static. To show you that in effect, you can see it hitting my dynamic sphere, my dynamic cube, sorry. If I go into my types and delete dynamic, now it's just static and pawn and I run it, you'll notice it collides with me as I'm the pawn, and it collides with the wall behind the cube because that is a static object. Now when I refer to the object types, I'm referring to the collision types. If we go into this wall right here, this is my blocking wall in the back, and we scroll down to the collision types, you'll find the collision presets. If we open that up, the object type is what we care about you'll notice it says world static. If we click on this blueprint I created and go to, let's say the cube, we will find the collision object type is world dynamic. And then I mentioned earlier that the pawn, the player we're playing with, it is the object type pawn. Object types are accessed like all of our other collision settings under the edit project settings. We go to the collision section and you'll find your object channels. By default, the object channels that come with the game are these six types, but you can always add your own object channel and it would collide only with that object channel if you want to use that for your line trace. The object channels and collision in general is handled separately in another video, so please refer to that. 
Finishing off the settings, we have trace complex. Basically, are we going to test against a compact complex collision type or a more simplified box or sphere type collision? By default, you should be able to keep this off unless you have something that has a very complex collision, maybe a character and you want to know exactly which limit hit rather than just on the arm, you want to know if it hit a finger, for example. Actors to ignore is just an array of actors. If we plug something into here, we're just going to go ahead and ignore that as any of the output hit types. Draw debug type. Right now we have it set for one frame. This is just basically what we're seeing. So if I set this to none, you'll notice we no longer have our line here. We're still colliding. We just can't visually see it for debug purposes. And ignore self. If I go ahead and uncheck that, you'll find it's going to end up colliding with itself when it generates it. If the originator, the sphere, had collision turned on, it does not because, again, let's add this. Let's turn on dynamic and show you what I mean. You'll notice we now have a green line. Remember my originating point for my line trace is in the middle of the sphere and then it goes towards its target. Because it's not ignoring itself, and I've told it to collide with the dynamic, and itself is a dynamic, it's going to go ahead and block itself. If you do ignore self, it's going to ignore itself when it casts a line trace, and it's going to successfully fire out and not trigger based on itself. And that's useful if your line trace starting point is inside of your item, your origin point. If you have, for example, a gun and you have a starting trace point at the trigger, not the trigger, at the muzzle, muzzle, the end point of the barrel where your bullet exits, then you probably won't have an issue. For the most part, you can keep this on. That is going to wrap up the line trace for objects node.